show, starting off now uh, with talk with the legal profession. There's a lot going on in that, in that sector, especially leading up to what is seen as a, <laughs> quite a titanic battle uh, at the end of July. I have here with me Olumide Akpata, who's a lawyer. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Buka. Um, Thank you. I hope you're keeping safe. How's the pandemic treating you um, at uh, work this period? This is, um, this is, I mean, this is a major, major, it's a, it's a major issue. And you, could, you, you, I'm glad that you keep on reminding us yes. that um, we must be careful. We must continue to be careful. For my firm, we're still essentially working from home. And uh, we have all of those protocols in place. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll ride out this storm. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, most people didn't think it was going to go on this long, but yeah. hopefully yeah. people are starting to take it at some point as seriously as they should. But let's, let's talk about the, the, the law now. And it's, it's a profession that you know is very dear to my heart. Um, I've been, uh, I was called to the bar 15 years ago. Um, but like m many other people, a lot of us have left the profession, even if temporarily. Um, one of the major reasons, at least for me, that I hear is remuneration. Um, uh, while in law school, even I, when I heard about what lawyers earned, a lot of us were like, is this really what this is about after spending six, seven years, plus minus, as to strike <laughs> in university? Is that what it is for us? What is going on with lawyers' fees? Why are we still having this conversation decades into uh, the NBA being such a formidable force? I can tell you what I can tell you what the immediate uh, the immediate causes are, which is I, I don't think that uh, as a body, as a profession, we have sat down to actually articulate strategies and measures that can help us protect our turf, help us earn more as law firms, and help us ensure that um, lawyers, wherever they may be employed, whether at law firms or at uh, in corporate organizations or in, in government service, yeah. get paid properly. I can tell you that I will place the blame squarely at the doorstep of, uh, of those who are, at, who are in charge of uh, the profession. Because um, these things don't happen by accident. You have to be deliberate about it. You have to, you have to negotiate uh, carefully uh, the kind of terms that you want for your profession or for the association. So I, I think that um, a lot more needs to be done because you are right, in terms of remuneration, uh, lawyers are really badly and poorly paid yes. uh, around the country. Uh, if, and then in terms of earning capacity, because there are two different things, there's the, earning, uh, the remuneration of lawyers, then the earning capacity of the law firms. The Nigerian law firms are not earning as much as they ought to uh, be earning, considering that they're operating in the largest economy in Africa. Um, the fortunes of our profession do not really reflect that status that Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa. You would think that we're operating in, a, in, a, in, a, in an economy that is uh, really uh, struggling in terms of, uh, out, in terms of how, uh, in terms of the kind of, uh, uh, how buoyant. Yeah, I'm careful be. to say how buoyant it is because yes. I'm not so sure the economy <laughs> is that buoyant, but yeah. the potential that is here, our, our, our lawyers are not even taking benefit of it. Yeah. I told you, but I said to you, Ebuka, that I can tell you what the immediate causes are. Yeah. So there's a failure on the part of the NBA to actually sit down. For, for example, in terms of uh, protecting our, our space or our turf, um, a lot of people are doing the work that lawyers ought to be doing. So that affects you. In what you way? So for example, you have agents who just sit down and draw up agreements. Yeah, I mean, what's the point? They just drop the agreements, find a way, go and get a stamp from somewhere, a lawyer stamp from somewhere, and affix it on a, on a document. And they're depriving, in that way, they're depriving lawyers of income that ordinarily should have come to them, right? Uh, um, I know that uh, some of the big accounting firms want to morph into what they call multidisciplinary practices. They want to practice law, right? Uh, that could, if that happens, of course, you can, as you can, you can imagine that quite a bit of, a, quite a number of lawyers will be out of work Right? Um, I'm not, I, I don't quarrel with that proposition, but I yeah. quarrel with the situation where the MBA uh, is not part of the conversation. It ought to be yeah. part of the conversation, but that, those are the immediate causes. Yeah. What is the remote cause of this? It has to do with the way we train our lawyers. Okay. It has to do with the value that the lawyer brings to the table. You, you know, so if we, cons we have a system of legal education where I think we train our lawyers to focus essentially in one direction. Which Dispute, is? Dispute resolution. Okay. You understand what I mean? Um, Dispute resolution, very, very minimal corporate law content as far as I'm concerned. And so they come out of law school, 7,000 plus of them, 
come out of law school every year, essentially offering the same type of service. So, and, and I was telling uh, some, another colleague of yours recently that it's simple economics. If there are 7,000 lawyers available to offer the same type of service, what will, only one thing will be affected, their price. Yeah. You know, so that is why they will earn 20,000 or 15,000 so, or whatever. A lot, of, a lot of the questions would be the how we, we get around fixing this. Because, I mean, I saw a proposition sometime on social media. I didn't think it was practical about, you know, putting a minimum wage for law firms to pay lawyers and stuff like that. Are things like that practical? And what are we looking at to start fixing this? You're, you're correct. There are difficulties associated with that because the issue of uh, what you pay an individual is essentially a matter of contract. But uh, I, I think the MBA has the gravitas. MBA has the, uh, has the uh, pr uh, influence to at least interfere in or intervene in that space. It may not be minimum wage. It may be, what is a living wage, right? And then prescribe that living wage to those who employ lawyers and devise means of ensuring that they comply. You are right, it may be very difficult to legislate over this, but when you make it in such a way, you, you, you design it in such a way that non-compliance, right, would be inimical, to, the, uh, to those who, who are non-compliant, they would reconsider. So for example, for example, if we, if we get, uh, if MBA is able to negotiate with uh, 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 those who employ lawyers or those who retain the services of lawyers and say, listen, there's a basic minimum that lawyers should earn. And when you, you, big, uh, you big corporate are about to retain a law firm, make that part of the conditions precedent. Let them tell you what they pay their lawyers. And you tell them that, well, if you are not paying your lawyers in uh, accordance with the standard, the minimum prescribed yeah. by the MBA, I'm sorry, I can't uh, retain you. We see that happen with law firms in other, in other jurisdictions where you say, oh, diversity is important to me as, as, a, as a, an employer or as a retainer of lawyers. If you, are not if you don't show uh, diversity in your workforce, I can't deal with you. There are lawyers in, in England, law firms in England at the moment, they put there at the bottom, amongst the other things that the other um, requirements. No, what they do, if you see, the, the, they say we are a li we we pay a living wage. Okay, it's part of they advertise that as part of their their street cred that we pay a living wage because it has now become the norm that even if we are not able to legislate living wage, we are, we are able to say encourage you yeah. and, and and how do you determine living wage? It's just by empirical uh, study. Go, and it can be the same. Living wage in Lagos cannot be the living wage in Tamaturu. Yeah. There's no doubt. So MBA should take that step so that you are a bit more scientific yeah. in, in the way you approach this I issue. want to talk about you now because a lot of people, one thing I heard a lot when I left the law school, then I joined law school was, oh, the easiest way to uh, make money for yourself and earn a living wage or, or live a good life as a lawyer is to own your own law firm, uh, which you have done successfully. You are a senior partner at Templars, I believe. Um, what did you do? Because a lot of lawyers want to know. I mean, not everybody's going to own a law firm, but if someone decides to go down that path, what did you have to do to be so successful uh, in, a, in a field that people see as very tough, in a market that's even very tough? Well, firstly, I, I didn't start out um, running my own law firm. Very key. So firstly, I honed my skills. I, I, I honed my skills with one of the best uh, litigators to have come out of this profession, the late Dr. Mudega OJ, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. I started uh, at his firm, right, uh, in Wari in Delta State. And that's where I worked until uh, I teamed up with my cousin uh, to set up our law firm, Templars, right? And so, yeah, but yeah, we started out pretty early. I, we were in our 20s. So what did we do? Uh, we, we, we just very quickly checked out the lay of the land. It's the same principles that you apply to business, that you apply, a law, law is a business. And we said to ourselves, where are the needs? Where will our services be needed? So young guys like us, just coming out of law school, uh, trained graduates of the 90s, we were not going to run around telling the clients that, hey, listen, we, 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 we were the best in litigation and we'll defend you in court. They'll look at us funny and tell us to get out of their faces, right? But we decided to look for emerging areas of practice, right? Um, firstly, we, we told ourselves that it cannot be instant gratification. So we're not, it wasn't a case of uh, uh, make a few bucks today and then blow, blow, blow everything you make. But firstly, we were going to build an institution and we looked for new areas. Areas where the titans were, had not dominated, where we're not even interested. I always give the example. Today, my law firm, we are very, we play 
at the highest levels of uh, electricity law in Nigeria. We have experts in electricity That's law. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. So, but why did we? Why, how come? Because one of the first independent power plants built in this country, or, or at least proposed in this country, we, we were part of those who were advised on it. But this was in the 90s, because it was a deliberate strategy, go to the road less traveled, right? And, and then work on that, and then build your competencies in these areas. Because it was in the 90s, Nigeria was a para nation at that time, but investors were still coming. So telecoms, uh, uh, power, uh, um, privatization. The privatization program was going on at the time, and we 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 we, we dove into we, we, into it very, very head on, yeah. right? So, for any young lawyer today who would like to, firstly, um, don't rush to open your own law firm. I would say, get experience, get knowledge, but um, try and look for new areas, and they are bound. Entertainment law, right? You know, we can count on the fingers of one hand the entertainment law experts that are available in Nigeria today. Meanwhile, that sector is exploding right before our eyes. So there's work to be done yeah. uh, if, if the young lawyer would, uh, would look in that direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know you're not, you're not a, like you said, you're more in the corporate, corporate field, but one of the complaints I hear from people generally is how slow the law, the hand of the law turns in Nigeria. And it seems to be a deliberate effort by lawyers to sort of, you know, drag these cases out because they want to make money off of people. And there's a lot of lost faith, basically, in lawyers in mm -hmm. Nigeria by mm -hmm. people. And these are some of the things I believe the MBA should be, you know, thinking about. How do we make the law more efficient? Because, I mean, lawyers are a key part of that. What, uh, what's wrong? What's, is it a part of the conversation of not having enough money and trying to look for any means of? And how can we start to, you know, shift the narrative there? Okay, well, first, uh, firstly, um, Yes, I stopped being a litigator a long time ago, yeah. but I've never really left because my law firm, uh, I run a law firm. We have, I have um, at my firm well over 30 litigators. Two of my partners are senior advocates of Nigeria. So that reality is still my reality because in the course of running the firm, I understand the challenges. I have to understand the challenges that uh, are in that space. Yeah. So what you find and why you find, let me tell you what I think the issue is. Again, it just the, it goes back to the way we are trained, right? So, firstly, the court system is slow, really slow. So there, must, there is need for us to uh, intervene in that space. MBA needs to work harder with the with the regulators, with those who run the administration of justice or administration of justice. Yeah. yeah, but but then but point, picking on the point you raised, which is that we lawyers seem to delight in, in the slow pace. But, but you know why? Because our business model, right? The business, because 80, about 80% 80 of us operate in that space. Our business model is to drag it out because you, see, you earn more, right, when the thing drags out. I mean, not, uh, quite a number of people quarrel with me about this, but uh, you see, our business model as lawyers, because of the way we are trained, yeah. is antithetical to the business model of the, of the client. The client, we, the client ought not to be in court. The yeah. mentality should be, my client should not get to court. But because the way we train our lawyers... So it goes back to your point about training. training. And because fixing, because, fixing because from the that, is yeah. where, that is where we know how to make our money. Yeah. Okay, I want to come to another issue now, um, which is it's been talked a lot on, on social media in the last couple of weeks about this sort of divide between senior advocates and lawyers. Um, almost like there's a disconnect, you know, and it's come up a lot. Why, why, what's going on? How do we fix that? Why does, why does this disconnect seem to exist even if it doesn't? What, what, what's happening? Well, the, the, the disconnect, uh, you know, firstly, I will not tar everybody with the same brush. Yeah. So there are, there are, Maybe 300, 400 senior advocates, uh, right? So it's not everyone who is, every one of them who is disconnected, yeah. right? I, I just said to you, I have two partners who are senior advocates. I have loads of friends who are senior advocates, and they get it, right? So, but the issue is that um, um, over time, um, these, the senior advocates and even just the senior lawyers uh, have been used to doing things in a certain way, and change is difficult. You know what I mean? Just changing things is difficult. And they, are the, they have been at the, they are at the helm of affairs of our profession. And I've just tried to demonstrate to you that quite a lot is wrong in the way we have been doing things. 
the way we've been training our lawyers, the way we have been uh, intervening in this space in terms yeah. of how lawyers are remunerated, how lawyers, how the earning capacity of law firms, quite a lot is wrong in the way we've been doing things. So, so um, sometimes criticism is taken, some people don't take criticism very well. And for me, it is not a blame game as such. It is just simply, can we go back to the drawing table and reapproach this problem in a different way? But some people take umbrage at that. Some people don't agree with that. First and foremost, they don't even contemplate a situation where mm -hmm. anyone else can be driving, uh, leading the charge. So mm -hmm. it must be us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if us haven't been able to fix it, you know what I mean? And so that's, that's, that's the problem. But like I said, I don't tie everybody with the same brush. Yeah. I believe that, you know, reason will prevail. We will all sit around the table because it's our profession. And it's everybody's. It's everybody's. Yeah. It's our responsibility. Before we go now, just, I mean, as a lawyer, the, the, there's, it's one profession that seems to be misunderstood a lot, you know, by, by Nigerians. There's the belief that the average lawyer is deceptive and is just always trying to get your money. As a lawyer, what do you stand for? What, what is it that you... When we see your Lumi what do you what do you want to be seen as? I stand for the truth. I stand for fairness, right? I stand. You know. You know. It really hurts when um, when and you are quite correct. That's the perception. You know, when people no longer respect or believe lawyers or believe the profession. With good reason, sometimes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and it, it, it goes to the heart of discipline at the profession. Because no matter what, in every 12, there'll be a Judas, right? So there will always be the deviants. How do we discipline those deviants? How do we show society that we are not, um, we are not covering up for anybody? We are not, we're intolerant of bad behavior. So we have our legal practitioners disciplinary committee, but, but I don't think it's moving, it moves quickly enough. I don't think it is resourced enough to show that because we're a self-regulating organization. And so it is up to us to deal with those amongst us who give us a bad name. And what you find is that that increasingly, it is increasingly difficult for the client who believes that his lawyer or her lawyer have, uh, have um, treated them uh, in, in, a, in a manner that is unacceptable to get justice. You know what I mean? It is not as if the committee doesn't exist, but how easy is it for the average man on the street who believes that he has he's been hard done by uh, in terms of in his relationship with his lawyer to get justice, as it were, because justice must be done uh, and must be seen to be done, right? So um, discipline is important, right? We, we, there must be accountability. We must hold, there must be a system of sanctions and, and, and you know, actually applied, you know what I mean? So that, again, the public can now regain confidence and say, okay, these guys are serious, you know? Because, uh, because when, otherwise, when we speak, you know, say, ah, not be you when, you know, this is lawyer, don't be you chop my money yeah. the other day, if you know what I mean. Before we go very quickly, I mean, the NBA elections are coming up on the 29th and 30th. You are a candidate um, in that. Um, what are we expecting? Uh, we have a, just a few weeks, days, days to, the, to, to the elections, very quickly. Oh, well, um, um, it's a keen contest. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the race. I've been fully cleared to run for, for president of the bar. And I'm hopeful. Unfortunately, you know, very curiously, we are not allowed to campaign yet. Uh, curiously, I say. Um, but um, I just think that a lot needs to be done at the bar. And, and, and um, I want a bar that works for all. That is what I'm looking out for. I have, I have been active at the bar for, for almost as long as I've been a lawyer. I have been chairman of the section on business law. I, I was co-chair of the committee that organized the uh, 2019 conference. I have worked and I've observed the association at very close quarters. So I kind of have an idea where the gaps are. And because it is two, a two-year tenure, yeah. you know, and that experience is, is critical. Yeah. So I'm hopeful there are about close to 40,000 potential uh, voters in our electorate. I'm hopeful that um, they will understand the issues and they will vote right. Thank you very much, Olimide Akbasa. Good luck with the elections. Thank Looking you, forward Bukha. to everything. You were going to say something quickly? No, I was going to say we look forward to welcoming you back to the profession. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody's not, looking, not for, looking for great anyway. things. Exactly. Not that you ever left. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you.